Hey, welcome back to Shumoto Resto. And in today's video, I think I'm going to do a bit of a tour of uh, all my riding gear. Um, not got much to report today on uh, on the bike progress front. So the uh, ZX-7 is under the cover here, uh, as are a whole bunch of the bikes, because uh, I've been doing a bunch of body work uh, and everything just gets too dusty and messy. But I'm still waiting for the replacement decal kit for the ZX-7. Uh, I do have a guy lined up to come and put that on for me, uh, hopefully successfully, uh, when it arrives. And uh, I just kind of want to get through uh, all the body work uh, that I'm working on for my buddy before I start uh, getting into anything new. I want to get the decal kit on this thing, get it wrapped up and sorted away. And so I thought I would... Uh, fill the void on the bikes and talk a little bit about bike gear and most of the content today I filmed uh, back in the fall so uh, hope you enjoy it thanks for watching <music> Hey, welcome back. And as I said today, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, my my riding gear and just some of my own preferences and personal philosophies around protective gear and riding. And I found that the older I get, the more self-preservation um, instincts seem to kick in uh, and I amass more and more protective gear. Um, I think my riding skills are getting better as I get older. I am certainly practicing more than I ever did. I'm more aware of, you know, better bike control and all of that kind of stuff. The more miles I put on, I do take time to practice things. <clears throat> um, I'm not a fast rider by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, although, sure, there's a pile of bikes in here that are capable of uh, riding very quickly, a lot more capable than I, but, uh, you know, we're all in control of the right hand, right? So, um, I'm just out there to enjoy myself and, and to have a leisurely ride. It doesn't matter if the bike's got, you know, 15 horsepower or 150 horsepower. I'm not going to ride like an imbecile. That's just kind of my own, my own philosophy. I don't want to end up as a, a stain on the pavement, but regardless of that, um, we all know that, uh, stuff does happen out there. So, I just try to make sure that I've got uh, decent protective gear on. Uh, I can't say that the stuff that I buy uh, is definitively the best stuff out there, because I don't know. There's all kinds of good stuff out there. But um, I've I've tried a bunch of stuff, and some of the stuff I like, some of the stuff I obviously I, I haven't liked as much. Um, but I, I, I'll just kind of give you an idea of what I, what I do wear. So I've got a... This is an icon. It's just a protective uh vest that's the uh, it's got the body armor built right into it so even if the jackets that i wear have a a foam or a protective kevlar insert i still wear one of these it's kind of uh, extra insurance um i also have some days that are incredibly hot like if you hit 30 some odd degrees oh. that one underneath a leather jacket still tends to get very very hot this one, um, although it's kind of an off-road thing, I guess, um, it's still good extra protection and it's very, very lightweight uh, and you don't overheat with it on. So I will wear that one underneath uh, a street riding jacket as well if the, the weather is super, super hot. Uh, as far as pants go, I have a few sets of pants. I have a number of uh, pairs of leather pants. And the pants I've got uh, built-in Kevlar hip protection and knee protection. Um, I've also got these pants, which are HWK. And they're, I got to tell you, these, I bought these up Amazon with zero expectations. And they had good reviews on Amazon, so I'll give them a try. And they, they're comfortable. I can wear, I really wear these in the spring and the fall because I can wear my track pants underneath these and just put these on as like an over pant. Um, there is, there's built in uh, armor in the pants and they're super comfortable. They fit well. 
Um, so yeah, I really like them. Obviously, I don't want to know. I don't want to go down on the bike and find out how durable they are. But anything I've read suggests that they are quite, they're quite durable. Um, so yeah, I really enjoy riding in those. They're very comfy. And I do have a another pair of pants. I don't even know where they are. Down here, I think, somewhere in the pile of the mess that needs to be cleaned up. Uh, more of an insulated bib style pant if it's really cold out, which I tend not to ride in really cold weather. Um, Alp, this is my Alpine Stars uh, jacket. I can't remember which model it is now. But anyway, it's a, again a comfortable jacket, good protection. Uh, I like the high vis. Well, here is yellow. It's kind of, you know, again, back to the safety factor. Visibility is always a good thing uh, from my perspective. So that's that's a really comfortable jacket. I took I took the uh, the foam thing out of the back on that one. I just found that the fit was better since I was wearing the uh, this particular vest with that one. That it was a a more comfortable fit. It was a little too snug uh, with that inserted in it. So, but my, my, my feelings now are if I actually set out riding and for any reason, if I forget to put on uh, a tech vest, I end up turning around and coming home and coming back and putting it on. I just, I feel like I'm naked without it. So, um, and then next thing, I guess we'll look at boots. Um, I never wear, I never wear running shoes. I always wear, um, you know, a boot, a protective boot and, uh, Make sure, making sure it comes above the ankle. Um, a couple of these pairs of boots are Icon, and I've I found personally that they've been really, really comfortable and a good wearing boot. I've had these particular boots for quite some time. Um, these are Icon Accelerant. Nice, nice, comfortable boot. Good fit. Um, they've got this, the snap close on the front and then the zippers on the back. Um, these ones, I only just got them a little while ago. These are Icon 1000, kind of more of a casual style boot. I haven't worn these too much yet. These ones I've, I've ridden in a lot. Icon Retrograde, they're a, a decent looking boot. The only thing with these boots, uh, given that they are kind of like a suede uh, finish, um, I don't know if that's genuine suede or just faux suede but either way and the color um i wear these on my africa twin and it's a dct so i don't have a problem um with it but yeah i i did find when i wore them on one of my other bikes uh using when you use the shifter you end up with a black mark here which was a uh, you know a bit of a pain um so then i've uh, I typically only worn these when i ride my africa twin but they're a comfortable boot for sure Nice and uh, nice and sturdy, but comfortable. Um, these <clears throat> I got these at the beginning of this year. Um, I don't remember what make these are. Oh, these are Joe Rockets, and I really, really like these. These are these are a nice, comfortable boot. I can't remember the name of them, but uh, I like the look of them, and so I bought a pair. And uh, yeah, super comfy. Nice, they feel very supportive, uh, but uh, but quite comfortable. Um, from a sportier boot perspective, um, these TCX boots are, have been pretty good as well. I enjoy wearing those, they're quite comfortable. Um, and then these these boots were, I don't know, I bought them, I bought these ones online. Um, and to be honest, I probably should have sent them back. Um, these are first gear. And while they're, you know, they're not an uncomfortable boot, they are, I bought them because they're waterproof. And I bought them in case, I mean, I bought them to have a pair of kind of wet weather riding boots, but the reality is I never ride in the wet weather. I don't know, I'm not sure who I was kidding, um, I guess myself. But anyway, I bought them. Um, I find that they are, um, yes, they're okay from a comfort, okay from a comfort, perspective um, but they're quite narrow and they're a very narrow boot so not not that easy to get your foot into but once you're in um, they're not too bad and there is some insulation in there so 
you know, I'd on a scale of one to 10, I kind of give these a six, I guess. Onto the helmets. So I've got, uh, I've got a few different manufacturers. That's Simon Crafar is not my helmet. That's uh, that Arai Crafar helmet there. That's my brother's. Um, so yeah, I've just got, I've got one Nolan, two AGVs and two HJC helmets. Um, and yeah, I like them all. These are, these are decent, decent helmets. This F70, I find uh, super comfortable and it's uh, really, really good field of vision. It's a, and the other thing I like about it is you've got the, uh, it's, you can use the flip up handles on the visor from either side. So it's kind of a nice uh, ambidextrous kind of type of helmet there. I like that one. Uh, the AGV helmets, uh, both of these I find pretty good. Uh, I think this is a K3, and I like it better than the K1. Uh, the K3 has the flip-down visor, the K1 doesn't, so that's why it's got a, a tinted shield on it. Um, the i70, that was kind of, a, again, I kind of, I bought that one as, that's kind of my first thing in the spring uh, riding helmet, because I just leave the pin lock uh, insert in that particular helmet, so if it's going to be a kind of cold morning that's going to fog up on a conventional helmet, I, I mean, there's pin locks that come with some of the others too, but I just don't leave them in there. Um, I just wear that one if it's going to be a cold morning. And then the uh, the Nolan, it was on sale <coughs> at Fort Nine online, and I bought it, and it's it's really nice. I really like it. It's quite comfortable. Um, I guess the only thing that's uh, it's kind of hard to show here, but uh, it doesn't have a D-ring strap. It has that kind of that zip strap. So if some folks are don't like those. I don't feel that they're as secure. Um, I don't know. I, I I don't know if they are more or less secure. If they're an approved a DOT approved helmet. They must have. A reasonable level of uh, security around them, but anyway, it's a uh, it's a comfortable helmet for sure. I like it a lot. Good field of view. Uh, it's not noisy. It's reasonably light. I think this is the noisiest helmet I have, and even it's not too bad because it has a chin curtain on it as well, so it's not too bad at all. But most of these are they're not overly noisy. They're not overly heavy. Um, they're pretty good. And then uh, gloves, work my way to the back here. Uh, entirely too many pairs of gloves, but hey. So uh, <clears throat> I'll start out with the cold weather riding gloves. I've got a couple of pairs. These uh, Scorpion XOs are my favorites. They're fantastic. They're super comfortable. Um, and for a for a cold weather riding glove, there's a, I still feel like I've got a lot of good uh, movement and uh, feel and dexterity with these on. The only thing with these that I read, uh, so I ordered accordingly, is I ordered one size bigger than I normally take, and they were only just big enough. Uh, they're quite comfortable now. But if you if you decide or anybody decides to get a pair of these, do your research and make sure you order yourself the right size. But uh, yeah, these are my favorite sort of cool weather uh, riding gloves. And then I have a pair of Alpine Stars cold weather gloves. Don't wear these as often. They're pretty good, um, but a little they feel a little bulkier on the hand than the uh, than the Scorpion XO. Uh, what else have I got? Icon. And these are just kind of summer riding gloves. And these have been pretty comfortable glove. I've put a lot of miles on those as well. Um, they fit a little on the big side compared to uh, some others of, uh, of a similar size. So, again, I would recommend if you look at anything from... Uh, from them that uh, just make sure that they fit before you buy. These are speed and strength. Uh, again, I, these ones are kind of an in-between. They're 
they're a lot warmer than a summer riding glove but not as warm as super cold weather so depending on what the weather's doing I'll if it's not too hot not too cold kind of in between I'll wear I'll wear something like this they're pretty good and let's take a look at we'll get to those guys in a minute so my favorite gloves two pairs in the in the favorites category if i can find them there they are okay so these i've had these for, for quite a long time these are speed and strength and when i say quite a long time i don't know 10 years at least um and they've just held up like they've i mean some gloves you get you know you get a few seasons on them and they, the stitching starts to come apart and whatnot but they're they've been very very comfortable uh the the fit is great um, the you know the finish and the stitching and all that kind of stuff has has just been fantastic on these things so Those have been uh, those have been quite good for me so far, so good. And then I think the most comfortable glove I've ever purchased. These are Climb. They've got the carbon fiber knuckle guard on them, and all the stitching on these is uh, it's kind of ex externally stitched, I guess, on the uh, you say on the fingers. So yeah, these are very, very, very comfortable gloves. Very, they're definitely a summer glove. They're very lightweight, but yeah, super comfortable. I mean, Climb tends to have a pretty good reputation on uh, on their quality and their their garments and whether it's gloves, boots, or jackets or whatever. Um, so certainly, from my perspective, they're probably the most comfortable pair of gloves I've ever bought. Um, I don't know whether they're the most protective gloves because they're certainly not as thick as some others. Um, so hard to say. Um, and then I've got a few pairs of uh, Valentino Rossi leather gloves. So these are, it says Dionysi. They're not Dionysi. They're, uh, they're, these are replica gloves. Uh, the guy in uh, Pakistan that makes um, these gloves, he made, he made all my jackets too, or most of my jackets. And, uh, you know, the, the, the quality of these, of the stuff that he makes is, is really, really good. Um, again, I've, I've had a lot of good luck with the, uh, with the products and the stitching is, is good quality. There's, you know, there's integrated armor and whatnot in them. Um, they take a little while to break in, but once they're broken in, they're, uh, they're, they're pretty comfy. And then I had them actually custom make these these again were kind of a Dionysi were were selling these on their site they're kind of a Valentino Rossi signature glove so I had him uh, make me a pair of these so these these have been quite comfortable as well um, yeah I like them they're good and then what else have we got kicking around Jackets, lots and lots and lots of jackets. So that's come, that's become a bit of an obsession. Let's let's be honest. Um, so when I bought this little CBR Repsol 125, it came with the leathers, and then when I bought my Buell, it came with that genuine Buell leather jacket. And so then from there, um, the gentleman that sold me the Repsol bike gave me the name and information of the guy that made the jackets for him. And he'd had some good experiences, uh, so I gave him a shot, and now I've got, I don't know, there's like 15, 17 jackets here, something like that. Um, and they're, they're, they're all customizable. Um, so these obviously are replica Valentino Rossi Patronus jackets. There's a Sky VR46 jacket. I've got Kawasaki jacket. Um, I've got a Suzuki X-Star jacket that I ride when I have my M109. And this is the one I custom designed. This is kind of a, a Valentino Rossi retirement tribute jacket that I did. It's kind of a 
Honda, Repsol Honda kind of on one side. This is Honda on the one side and then Yamaha on the other. Got the Grazi Valet on it on the one side there. Goat, greatest of all time. It's got the, the 46s in the back of the jacket. So yeah, this is I I designed uh, the jacket, and uh, the gentleman in Pakistan made it for me. And these are really reasonable, uh, reasonably priced, and and good quality. You can you can get them with or without external armor. Um, you can see some of them I have opted for the external armor. Some of them I've opted without. So the. Uh, you can see there on the uh, Nastro Azura Rossi jacket, there's, there's external armor on the shoulders and on the elbows. On my Freddie Spencer replica, there's no armor. It's more of a traditional old school style, same as the Rothmans. KTM, that's got the, the armor and it also has a, a back hump on it as well. So... Yeah, the Rossi, the Rossi jacket has the hump on the back as well. This Aprilia jacket was a completely custom jacket to match my Aprilia RSV factory. It's got the hump and the external armor and the internal armor. So, And they come with liners so you can wear them in the cooler weather. They zip in and out. This is the one I had made to go with my Africa twin. So, yeah. Uh, and they're super comfortable nicely made and they got the zippers down on the on the waist so you can actually attach attach the pants to them as well so as i said in the i never go out without wearing leather pants leather jacket uh, or if it's cooler weather i'll wear the uh the textile and insulated jacket and pants but most of the time if I can tolerate the heat, uh, even in the middle of the summer, uh, if it doesn't matter if it's 30 degrees out, I'll wear full leather. It's just, uh, I just feel more comfortable. I'll enjoy my ride more if I feel more comfortable. So, so there you go. There's a, a quick tour of the, of the gear. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Uh, please like, share, subscribe.